Mary was born into the Cameron family in Wagga Wagga in 1865. Her dad was a Scot who had lots of stirring stories to tell the kids. That's probably what set Mary along the road to storytelling, poetry and teaching. She started her teacher training at the age of 12. She worked hard at the job, one of her appointments being to Silverton near Broken Hill. Life was tough in that outback area and it was there that Mary learned that if workers didn't fight for their rights, they wouldn't get them. It was her introduction to working class politics. She moved to Sydney where she met the famous poet Henry Lawson. Lawson showed her the poverty that existed in the beautiful city of Sydney, where rat catchers regularly cleaned out the suburbs, now replaced by the southern end of the Harbour Bridge. One of the men who argued most strongly for a better distribution of wealth in Australia was a charismatic man called William Lane. But the 1890s was depression time, and the workers were getting nowhere. Lane decided to take a number of followers to Paraguay to set up a perfect society where everything would be shared. Mary was one of the settlers in this new Australia and it was there that she met her husband, Will Gilmore, and they had a son, Billy. Paraguay wasn't paradise, however, and the Gilmores decided to return to Australia. They settled on Will's parents' farm at Casterton in Victoria. While there, Mary was writing articles for a number of magazines, including The Worker. When Will decided to buy a farm at Cloncurry in Queensland, Mary said, no thank you, and moved to Sydney. For years, she edited a women's section in The Worker, which included household hints, but also articles educated women in politics and society. But Mary was always her own woman and quite capable of getting into a fight. She upset her bosses at the worker and resigned before she was sacked. During the Second World War, she lived at King's Cross, where there were often brawls between Australian and American soldiers. It was during the war that she wrote some of her best poetry. She grew old in the company of many of the thinkers, artists, writers and influential people of Sydney, though she sometimes wondered if she'd done the wrong thing by abandoning her husband. When she died, she was cremated and her ashes taken to Will's grave in Cloncurry. You can find out more about Mary Gilmore in my biography of her, available from greenbarrow.com. .au. It's one of the Aussie Notables series.